Hi everyone, Sam McKay here from Enterprise DNA. I want to go over a unique inventory management uh, piece of analysis here. Now this, this actually came out of the Enterprise DNA support forum. And I'll just uh, nav quickly navigate to that. Um, it was one of the more, most, more, more recent ones at time of recording where the um, member wanted to work out how many um, days stock was at zero. So how many, how many days uh, based on the stock movement data, how many days was any piece of inventory at zero, okay? So this is actually quite a, a, a it's a really interesting piece of real world analysis. And the way we eventually solved it was also very, very unique where we um, had to use, uh, we use count rows and within count rows, we use some additional uh, table functions to be able to manipulate the table uh, to then count up well, how many of these days were actually zero, okay? And so I just wanna go into, this This is just sort of demo data from, from the forum, um, but basically this is, this is what it looks like, okay? In terms of a visualization, so down here, a visualization of the stock levels. Now the data itself, uh, was just, um, and I, I believe like a lot of say SAP systems have this, where they actually say, they actually um, have information on stock movement. So how much stock is, uh, is changing. So you might say, okay, well we increased by 20, then we decreased by, so if you look, look at where my mouse is, um, decreased by one, decreased by three, so on and so forth. And this is obviously different, got different, um, different grouping, different materials, right? Okay, and so what we want to do is we say, okay, so we know, uh, we can know, you know, in a live way what our, um, our stock, when our stock changes happen, because you can see here that there's a date associated to when, when all of those changes occur. So someone obviously enters into the system or, you know, a sale is made and then inventory is shipped out and then there is a posting date in your inventory management system to say, okay, well, the stock's moved, okay? Also, you would have a posting date if you had stock coming in, right? Okay, and then just based off this very, very simple model that was generated, this is a very, very simple model, um, but this is all, that, all that's required. Um, all, you know, it's, it's very similar to all of the models that, that, that I develop and I go into. You know, we, we're just creating this waterfall of filters, right? And so what we wanna, we wanna work out, okay, we know when stock changes, right? And then derived from that, we can create, we can actually create like a running total or a cumulative total of like what our stock level actually is at any one point in time. Then based on that, we can work out, well, how many of those, you know, were, were there any days where the stock was at zero? And then we want to count up those zero days. Okay. So really, really, really great um, piece of analysis. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in terms of the model, we know that we're going to count up we're going to count up, uh, we're going to, in, in terms of the context that we're going to apply to this analysis, was we, we're going to apply some context from here because we're going to look at every single day. We're also going to apply some context from here so we get our material, but all the calculations are going to happen down, down here, right, in this particular um, table down here, which actually in this demo model isn't actually that long, but it's showing all the movements, right? Okay, so if we just walk through what we needed to do to solve this, right? Okay, so first of all, what we needed to do was we needed to do a very simple, um, we need to do a very simple sum, right? Sum up those changes in quantity. Okay. Then what I did was I placed that here. I placed that in, uh, in besides. So this is where we can actually see. So you see that I've got a bit of, I've got a bit of filtering going on here for my slices. So I've got this particular item is selected. So we're only looking at one material here. And then I'm saying, okay, well, in um, on this particular day we had minus one, and so on and so forth. So I think also up here there's probably a higher number. Fifteen. So we had an increase of fifteen, right? Uh, and then. 
um, and then we had a minus one, so we obviously sort of used or sold one of those, and then so on and so forth. So we, we work our way down. Okay, so if we wanted to work out which days were zero, right? Well, we need to see see what the cumulative balance is on any particular day, and that's what this visualization is representing. So on on this particular day, so let's let's just let's just find it again. So on this particular day, we had an increase of fifteen. So so basically, the inventory was fifteen. Okay. And then um, basically from this point, we need to have an amount until we hit the next day that we have a change in our inventory. And so, and that's represented by this particular drop down here and the same being said before. So we basically need to create a cumulative total, okay? Now, you'll see here that the technique I've used is very similar to any cumulative total. And I've um, and I've utilized the date table here, which is a, which is what I should be doing because we have the date column inside of here. And so basically, all I'm doing is I'm creating a cumulative total. Okay. Then when I create this cumulative total, and that's what that's exactly what this visualization is showing. We can see, okay, well this is what happens to our inventory, and then look what happens when we get to here. Boom, we lose we lose I think about thirteen. So so thirteen pieces of inventory we lose, and now we're down to zero. Now, what I want to do is I want to count up these zeros. Okay, how many days were they zeros? And and then this is what this is what this particular calculation is, is going to um, represent days out of stock. Okay, let's have a look at this. Okay, so the first thing you got to think about when you're trying to work these things out, and the best way to think of this is what is what sort of virtual table can we get that represents this column, this column, and this column. So what type of virtual table can we get that represents this? Because if you think about it, if we can represent this and then filter for just the zeros, then all we have to do is then count up the rows remaining in that virtual table. Because it's only going to have the amount of days which have zero stock because we've, we, will, we will create some sort of filtering inside of it. Okay, And so that's basically what I have done with this part of the formula. Okay, So I'm, I'm going to create a virtual table, filter it, and then count rows is going to do its job, okay? So my virtual table here is this, okay? I've used an, used an interesting technique. I've gone add columns, and then I've gone cross-join here because I want to make sure that every single day is represented against every single material, okay? So if two materials are selected, I want to make sure that you know the virtual table includes both of those materials on every single day. And that's what this does. It says... Create, create a list for me of every single day in the current context, then create a list for me of every single material in the current context, so it's just one in this case, because this is selected, then cross those up, so cross join, so combine those together, so that I have every single day for every single material. Then I want to create another column, which is the cumulative total materials, which is basically just this one here. So. As I said earlier, this is how I've created my virtual table of the, basically representing this, this column, this column, and this column, okay? Now that I've actually created this virtually in a formula, what I can do is I can go and utilize this particular column here, and I could say, you see here, I've just, I've just referenced this particular column here. Only filter this table because inside a filter, so this is the this is the filtering part, this is the table part of filter, and then this is the filtering part. I'm going to say, we'll filter this particular table for when the inventory level is equal to zero. Okay. Then what I've also added here, but it, and this is basically saying, but is not blank. Okay, because you see how these these are actually blank up the top here, but this isn't this is not really. Well, this data is probably slightly incomplete, but this is this is this is not saying that the inventory is zero in this case. Okay, we, what we want to only count is where there is actually a true zero, because potentially this is only this is when this is this might have been the first time that we actually bought this material. Okay, and so we don't want to have a look back at every single other um, blank value you know from from the beginning of you know from what's in the, this particular context you know determined by the slicer. Okay, so. See how I've solved it. I've created a virtual table of what this what this is representing. So, which is showing me the cumulative um, value or the running totals of what inventory we have for each material. Then I'm filtering it by this particular value. I'm saying, well, if it's zero, which, and if it's not blank, we'll then count count it up. We go count rows, count up that virtual that filtered virtual table, and that's how I get my 21 days. And so you'll see here if we come down here. 
So if I just got to go all the way down, let's see if we can quickly find it just around round this off. And so we've got 13, 13, 13, and then you see here that we've got a range of zeros. And so so we had a minus, we had a minus nine, there, minus two, then we had a minus nine, then we had two left, and then we had minus two, and then we just have we have zero imagery until we get to this day, and we added ten more. Okay, and that was for twenty one days. Okay, so really unique concept. I want to round it off there because uh, this is this has gone on for as long as I I wanted, but hopefully you could see not only just like how good this analysis is in Power BI. Um, and, and what Power BI can enable, but also just some techniques there around how to utilize count rows and virtual tables and, and to, to actually discover quite unique insights like this one. Okay, if you enjoyed this one and got a lot out of it, um, definitely throw the video a like. As always, really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Okay, all the best.